All right, we're back with part six of our Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord Let's Play. So, uh, in the last episode, let me jump into our party screen here. Uh, in the last episode, our brother Nathanos was married to Panalea, and she is going to be our new governor. So, uh, she has pretty good stewardship and charm and trade. So we're setting her up at Thraktore Castle, where we are currently. Uh, that should help keep things in line there. Uh, though I think things are already going relatively smoothly here. Let's take a look at our castle. So, yep, there she is as governor. Uh, loyalty is pretty good at 58. Um, food's looking all right. Militia is taken up as well. And then we have about 200 in the garrison as well. Um... How are we doing on our siege workshop? So it's about halfway done from the looks of it. Okay. Uh, we could go visit Varen Castle, but I would like to make a move on Ortesia here. So we currently have 334 men in our army, and I've noticed through just keeping tabs in the encyclopedia that uh, the Emperor here has been taken prisoner by the Asurai, so good time to maybe try to capitalize on that. I believe that much of his clan is in the same boat. It's been taken prisoner, yep. And he's been taken prisoner, yeah. So, aside from, I believe Jastian is still in the field. Yeah, we ran into him at one point. And I probably should have crushed his army, but he offered me quite a lot of gold to move along. And since he's no real threat to us, I figured I would just take the money. Um, if anything, it makes it harder for them to build their forces back up, right? Now, let's see. I don't think they have nearly so many minor factions uh, fighting for them either. Yeah, right now they're down to only two clans. So the Jawal have joined them, but all the minor factions are no longer supporting them. So this is like the best opportunity we're going to get. So to that end, let's get moving. I scouted out the garrison here earlier, and it's about 500. So we are at a numerical disadvantage. However, at least 200 of those troops are uh, either recruits or like tier two militia so not of any real consequence versus the vast majority of our army is actually um veteran troops so let's see 337 militia and 232 in the garrison and if we look at this these are all tier one or sorry tier two units and then the imperial archer is a tier two unit the Imperial Recruits are Tier 1. Trained Archers are Tier 3. And then there's a kind of a scattered amount of everything else. But honestly, uh, if we fight this intelligently, I think we can win despite the numerical superiority they have. Um, they also are going to have a really hard time. Let's go ahead and besiege it. I would like to get a ram going. They're going to have a really hard time um, driving me off of the siege camp. So we could potentially just wait this out as well. They will get their lords back eventually. But because they are at war with so many people and their parties have been completely wiped out, by the time they're able to build their forces back up enough to threaten me, this siege will have been long over. So we'll start with the ram. I'm not very inclined to use um, siege towers. I just I find that ladders are nearly as good, and you don't need to take any time to build them, right? So they have that advantage going for them. And so generally, what I try to do is just rush or is increasing with people for what reason what did we do what happened here oh well well the camp will be done shortly so 
So there it is. Uh, they have two onagers set up here. And a third on the way. I don't know if it's worth trying to, like, shoot those down. It would be pretty difficult. We don't really have that skilled an engineer right now. We, we do have an engineer, but he's only about 80 engineering, I think. And so uh, we could build our own onagers and try to, you know, fight back. I guess let's queue them up and we'll play it by ear. Okay, so I have four onagers built. Let's go ahead and deploy them. So what I've noticed is that even when I get them into reserve before the enemy uh, artillery fires, they still take damage, um, which is kind of unfortunate. So we're going to be at a huge disadvantage here, but we'll see what we can do. Um... If we can knock a few down, we might be able to build them faster than they can. But it looks like we're at too much of a health disadvantage to um, maybe make this up. Actually, no, we did... Um, we did win that. I'm not sure how, but we did. So, we'll keep firing. And if we can knock a hole in the wall, that'll make this even easier. All right, so that's another one down. Yeah, so we have complete range superiority at the moment. Um, it's interesting. I'm getting all of the engineering skill right now, even though I am not the engineer for our party. I'll take it, of course, but... Uh, yeah, I was hoping that Kaleem would get those points. Okay, come on. Let's damage those walls. Doing pretty well. If we could get two... I don't know that I want to split my forces, so honestly, as long as we have one breach, that's perfectly fine. So we have breached one part of the wall. I think I'm going to go ahead and just deploy now. Uh, the advantage of doing that is I haven't suffered much attrition as of yet. We've only had like six people leave the party. Um, we have a ram. We have four onagers. They have zero, so they have no artillery to fight back with right now. And we already have a wall breach. So we're going to have a pretty substantial advantage going in um, in every respect except for the numbers. So let's go ahead and lead the assault. Boy, oh boy, did that take a long time to load. So uh, let's see here. The breach is... Oh, that's kind of unfortunate. The breach is right next to the gate. So... That's going to do very little good. Um, it would have been nice if it was like here. Hmm. Okay, well. We have onagers deployed. Pretty much uh, all across the board there. I almost want to... Let's see, this one has a nice shot directly at the breach. I might jump on this one myself and see if I can just bombard the people who are trying to hold the breach there. As far as my troops go... Um, it's a little concerning that we only have seven ranged troops. Did we just deploy all infantry? Well, rip us, I guess. Um... Let's get them as far forward as possible in that case. And we'll just tell them to charge in, I suppose. So... Yeah, you guys are all... Uh, melee, aren't you? Yep. So, I might need to get a... A battle size modifying mod because we're only... Like what? So 84, about 120 men on our side. And I'm assuming that the enemy is going to have slightly more than that because they did have more in total. So they're probably about 200. But yeah, I don't see any reason why this couldn't have just been um, the full parties on both sides because the, the game is capable of handling, I think, 2,000 on the battlefield. It does count horses in that, so if you have a lot of cavalry, obviously, but uh, all of our cavalry here is dismounted, so there is no horse to worry about. Anyway, 
Let's just uh, see what happens here. They're going to grab the um, ram, but that's kind of ill-advised. Where is that onager? There it is. So I actually want to manually target this one. Not that I'm particularly good at targeting these, but they're probably going to aim for the walls. And I want to aim for the breach, which I honestly don't think I can see. Let's just fire it and see where they go. Uh, a little bit short, it looked like. You gonna reload that for me, buddy? Okay, they're in. Um, let's range up slightly. Where's that gonna go? I mean, it's hitting a wall. Let's range it up a little bit more. But yeah, I... Thought I'd have a direct line of sight on the breach. That was a nice one. But I, I don't, unfortunately. I think the breach is like here. Let's see. Going in. Uh, I might need to aim longer. Looks like Kaleem's getting some kills, though. Yeah, let's up the range to about here. Because we're, we're trying to shoot past the wall, not onto the wall. But I honestly cannot see what I'm firing at. What's the breach? No, that's the gate. So it has to be like here. I'll just keep letting them go. Give them something to think about at the very least. I mean, we're, we're getting kills, right? It's just we're killing the guys on the wall, not necessarily the guys guarding the, the giant hole in the wall. All right, I'll let you take care of that. Cool. A few more kills. By the way, I'm sporting some uh, fancy new armor, in case uh, you didn't notice. Uh, I figured now that we're leading a faction, we should probably uh, look the part. Oh, so they don't have anybody guarding the breach. Well, it's a good thing I um, wasted all those shots. Let's dismount here. Oh, don't shoot my horse. You're going to pay for that, buddy. Uh, of course I missed. Come on. Right in the face. Oh, hello. Yeah, why don't you come fight my veteran infantry out here? Oh, good. We only pulled a little bit. It's going to make this even easier. Okay, I don't want to be... The only one in there, but this is exactly what I was hoping for. Oh. Don't want any part of that sword. Yeah, let's get these archers. Alright, now that we're in, it's um it's gonna be easy pickings, I would I would wager. I'm gonna tell the cavalry to charge as well, just because they might still be standing out there waiting for the ram to do its thing. I'm not even going to bother trying to block here. I'm just going to start hacking through the crowd. Um, I have a shield. Hopefully any attacks coming in will bounce off the shield. But uh, if I just turn myself into a, a whirlwind of uh, sword strikes, maybe I'll be safe. I mean, I am taking hits here, but I am also getting a lot of kills, so... Seems to be working out. There's a lot of green on the right. So it's just a matter of uh, cleaning it up, I imagine. We are still taking losses. But by and large, it's um, going in our favor. There's a lot of uh, shielded guys over there. So let's start putting arrows into them. Actually, I'm going to deal with you two. I do not want them shooting down at my men because that's one place where we're vulnerable is from above. Oh, come on. Look how he's 
Jesus Christ. Are you serious? Why can I not hit this guy? There we go. So there's enough men down there where I'm bound to hit something. Oh good, they just spawned in a giant group. I like their timing with the shields. I can fire in and uh, they manage to raise them just in time. Where are you going? They're trying to like re-man the walls it looks like. Is that their leader? No, that's my horse, I think. <laughs> no, my horse is outside. But I, I think I'm the only one that spawns with a horse. So it's kind of strange. Did the other guy go down? I think he did. Uh, I'm just going to fire that off. All right, it looks like most of their men are actually um, congregating over here. Not entirely sure why. We don't seem to have anybody trying to assault those walls. At least I hope not. Yeah, we have a lot of people up there that we're going to have to deal with. So my men are slowly starting to trickle up the ladder, so we'll get there eventually. But in the meantime, I'm just going to empty all my uh, quivers into these guys. So I might need to tell the artillery to hold off because I, I'm seeing uh, artillery bounce off the uh, stone. Oh, he's done. It's, it's a bit difficult to tell who's worth targeting here. Everybody has shields, or at least a lot of them have shields. But if I can get the right angle, it won't matter. I assume the men up there are all that's left, because there's very, very few troops left, according to the... Uh, the balance of power bar up at the top. In case anybody starts fleeing, I'm going to swing around this way. Oh, yep. There goes the artillery. I don't think there's another way down. So this might be the only... The only way up as well. Not sure why he just pulled his uh, bow out. Wow. Um, <laughs> so I guess these guys did pretty well. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to promote all of them. That would be cheating. In fact, um, I'm probably not going to promote any of them. I don't need that many companions. So, yeah. Good for them. They got plenty of XP. Oh. But, uh, yeah, I, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> so we won, and pretty handily as well. Let's see. We lost 67. 11 from my party, most of which were just the bog standard cavalry. And then just a few here and there. Uh, 31 from Arturius's party, most of which were recruits. Fair enough. And then uh, 6 from the Limitani, which are the tier 2 infantry. So, you know, basically militia. Um, and then it looks like from Nathanos's party, which was actually the biggest party of the three, he only had 25 losses. So he... His men did pretty pretty well. But, uh... Recruits... Yeah, he didn't lose anything too important other than the elite archers. Okay, so 109 prisoners will, of course, take all of them. And then we can ransom whatever we want and use the rest to bolster the garrison. Let's see. Um, you guys are kind of overpowered, if I'm being honest. I'm going to upgrade you. Let's upgrade you as well. 15 of you are ready to become T2 
tier 3 cavalry, I believe. Actually, no, tier 4, potentially. Let's do that. Okay. The veterans can become Evocati. Regular legionaries will become veterans. These Balistari will become elite Balistari. And that's about it. So we're going to share the loot with our troops. We'll take the rest of this. We'll see if any of it's worth handing out. Otherwise, we'll just sell it. There was some pretty good armor at the top. There's also some nice horse armor in here. So yeah, there's definitely stuff that we might be able to make use of, but obviously it's going to net us quite a bit of money as well. I have a ton, so now that we have our own town, we need to look at investing in quite a bit here. Okay, we're going to show mercy, of course, because we plan on keeping this place. And blah, 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 blah. Let's continue. So, I know I just made Panalea the governor of Thraktore Castle, but it might be worth moving her over to here. Settlement owner change, yeah, of course. So now that that faction um, no longer has a fief, I wonder if um, they are just going to be outright defeated or if they're going to join another, another lord. I honestly would not mind taking on that clan um what's the easiest way to look into this so kingdoms yeah they still exist as a faction if we look at this clan the the leader is kind of an a-hole um and he doesn't like us so i would not be interested in him joining but his eldest son jastian is daring and impulsive he also fits the criteria of only one negative trait so uh would not mind having him he doesn't like us right now but that's to be expected because we did just you know fight a war with his clan um this is the wife of the emperor she is cruel and has two negative traits so she's also out um then on um does fit the bill and oh he doesn't because he's cruel so uh if we were able to get rid of a few of the members of that clan i would potentially be inclined to take them on let's see i leveled up i think during that our throwing skill went up i'm not entirely sure why but it did let's do um we should be looking at the captain perks because i don't have throwing weapons and i don't intend to use them so increased troops drawing speed uh, from what I remember, Strat Gaming tested this, and it I don't think it actually did anything. So, Shield Breaker is probably the way to go here. Uh, for Riding, we also went up. So, here, I believe Nomadic Traditions is the way to go. What will this do? Increase carry capacity of pack animals by 20. I mean, that's nice. Um, and better deal for buying and selling mounts. So if you're doing a trading run, I believe this is the way to go because the Asurai horses are like one of the best um, trading commodities and this basically just improves your profit margins. But since we're not really doing that, our mounted infantry increase our party speed by 30%. That's pretty good. So basically that means if we keep enough horses for all of our infantry to ride when they're not in battle, then our party is going to be significantly faster. And then if we're a melee, or excuse me, if we're a cavalry captain, then our um, cavalry would be a little bit faster. But I'm going to take that either way. I have a focus point as well. Where would that be best spent? Uh, stewardship is getting pretty close. And since we are going to remain a party leader which is probably worth investing in that let's see how is leadership doing we're catching up to our capacity on leadership too because we're leading this giant army around but this seems more pressing so let's do that tavern district it's time to ransom off a bunch of prisoners i don't want to ransom them all though so the imperials i'm inclined to keep just because they're the right culture for our garrison. However, um, these Kuzate troops, the Vlandian troops, I'm 
I'm more inclined to get rid of them. So these guys are all Imperials. And there's 98 of them. So that's a pretty substantial garrison if we're able to convert them all. Now then, I'm going to comb through our gear and sell some of it off. You guys don't need to see that, but uh, I'll let you know how much money we make when it's all said and done. And then, apparently, the tournament that was in progress when we started the siege is still ongoing, so we uh, will probably take part in that as well. All right, so without selling any weapons, we are going to be looking at 140,000 dinars. So we're going to be approaching a million dinars very rapidly here. I'm going to keep as many of the weapons as I can for crafting materials. But even then, like I have so many of some of these that I might need to just offload them as well. Uh, like these hatchets, for example, I have 24. So I'm going to unload those because that's probably um, adding a significant amount of weight to my... Um, party's inventory there. So some of those where I have a ton of, I'm just going to offload completely, um, especially because like I have so many sickles of just different qualities. If you factor them all together, it's probably like 50 to 100. But it's nice to have stuff to break down for crafting skill as well as, of course, um, materials. So let's check out this tournament. We're going to join... And it's just a big uh, four-way brawl to start things off. The prize is a sword that I'm not very interested in, but we'll take part nonetheless. So I'm starting out on my brother's team. That's a nice change of pace. It looks like we have Marius in the red team, as well as uh, another one of our companions. And then up here, Patris, I think, is also one of our companions. But, uh, yeah, so Team Blue is Team Stilicos. Let's go ahead and get in here. Yeah, let's go after the yellow team to start. Got a nice hit on him. Um, I'm just going to stick with my brother, I think. Who's he going after? These infantrymen here? That's Marius right there. Let's go for a jump hit on him. Oh, no. Come back here, horse. All right. Now we're in business. I got to be careful because most of these mounted troops or mounted fighters have um, lances. I do not, of course. But that should be all right. As long as I don't uh, charge one of them head on. Yeah, this sword is a bit lacking in reach. There we go. So I see a yellow and a green over here. But it, blue team is going strong. Surprised this guy made it so far into the battle in just a tunic. All right, so that just leaves Patris, wherever he is. Oh, right over his head. That was a good duck. Not that it was intentional, but... Come on. Giddy up. His armor is really, really good. Because he's wearing what the Tagmata cavalry wear. But we got him eventually. Okay, so now blue versus red. So... Um, that was actually the yellow team. So effectively blue versus yellow again. We'll keep betting, even though there's very little to be gained from it at this point. Oh, we're going archery. Okay. Well, archery is one of our combat skills that we're using, so it's not complete waste. I'm going to focus on their archers to start. Or actually, that's a, it's a javelin. Man. man. Damn it. <laughs> I don't know what happened right there. I tried to pull it back after I got run into, and... Uh, I guess he didn't quite get the order. Okay, Allery is down. 
Gonna focus on you. That worked out quite well, because I might have eaten that arrow otherwise. Ouch. Well, I ate that one. Why doesn't he shoot straight ever? I'm aiming at center mass just for that reason. I'd love to go for headshots, but his aim is not precise enough. Oh, I didn't realize it was just me against two. Uh, two mounted guys, no less. Well, this will be interesting. I'm assuming I have a melee weapon of some kind, so if I need to, I'll jump on that horse. But uh, I figure I can probably keep them at bay by just shooting them as they get close. Did you just exit the arena? Maybe he just gave up. Oh, maybe not. Okay, you are not that well armored. Why won't you go down? Well, I think I'm going to need a mount here just to stay alive. Can I use this bow from horseback? No, I can't. So this is going to be pretty tricky because I don't have the reach. If I can, I'll try to uh, grab a spear as I go by. But that's going to be very difficult from horseback. I don't think it's going to let me. I think I'm too high up. Oh, couch lance for the win. That's what I was afraid of. So Patris got his payback. Let's see who wins this. Allery's going to advance. That's the dude in the tunic from uh, when we were fighting the yellow team. And then uh, Patris. All right, let's uh, watch this since it's one of our companions. And the guy who knocked us out. So Patris is one of the Tagmata cavalry that leveled up in the last episode and became a companion. Wow, he made very short work of Allery. What a beast. Okay, so he wins. Um, he'll get that sword, I imagine. And I got a little bit of renown. So let's actually take a look. Where do I rank currently? Cowdog is still first. I'm not in the top 10. Oh, I'm literally number 11. Okay. So I think another victory or two will be me into the top 10 which is great anybody else that we know I know our brother is on the list I just don't know how far up uh, do, do, do. not seeing anybody that I recognize well I recognize plenty of them because they're the lords that are in every game but um, not anybody from our party oh there we go Nathanos 83 with one victory to be fair, he's going to have a hard time because every tournament he takes part in, I'm also in. But uh, we'll see if we can get him some more victories. I, I, I have a character switcher mod, so I might actually jump in a few tournaments as him just to kind of up his uh, status, if you will. Uh, right, so let's manage the town. What are we looking at currently? Fortifications. That's fine, I suppose. After all, um, we do want to hold this place as long as possible. But to be honest, um, if it's already at Tier 2 and it's going to take 200 days to get it to Tier 3, or maybe it's at Tier 2 or Tier 1 now going to Tier 2. Either way, it's going to be a while before we see any benefit from that. I'm more inclined to start working on some of these they're also going to be faster projects so we want prosperity obviously we want um more food we want more militia so yeah honestly this is not a concern so i'm just going to clear the queue completely and loyalty is okay 50 is honestly not bad Militia is actually going up relatively quickly as well. Food could be a lot better. So what can we do for food? I might have to go buy some and just sell it to the... Sell it to the... um, What's it called? Merchants here. Because that's already maxed out. Wall repair speed. Honestly, that might be a good idea just because we did blow a giant hole in the walls. And then militia, granary, 
aqueducts. That'll be faster, so let's add that to the queue first. And then I'm kind of inclined to say, let's go aqueduct first. The prosperity to me is more important than the taxes because I already have enough money myself. I want to make sure that the town is, you know, having a healthy economy before I worry about uh, how much money ends up in my pocket. And then as far as governors go, we'll have to wait around and see on that. So right now there's a silversmith here, a tannery, and a brewery. Breweries are generally good choices, but let's see what, what are the attached villages and what are they producing? Or the bound villages, excuse me. So Garangolia is producing silver, so silversmith is probably wise. What else do we have here? Um, vanilla, which is over here. That's kind of a weird one to be attached. That's producing salt. And then was that one part of it as well? I would assume. Arbutus, yeah. So grain. So yeah, the brewery is a good choice. I think I'll actually buy the brewery out. And let's see. He owns a silversmith and a clearing. A clearing and the waterfront. You own the brewery. So let's talk to you. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's that's great. I want to buy your brewery. Uh, 14,000? Sure. Okay. Sounds good. The silversmith, I think I'll buy as well. I'm not sure that a tannery is the best choice for this town, so I'm not going to buy it until I know what I want to turn it into. But let's... Let's get the silversmith. Uh, what do you have an issue with? Uh, banditry, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So, oh, you want to bait them with a caravan or something? Oh, escort. No, no, sorry. Quick question. Did I click on the wrong guy? Is that why it's not letting me? I did. Okay. Let me buy that. Cool. All right. So that's a little bit of an investment. It didn't really cost us much in the grand scheme of things, but we'll at least get some more uh, steady income from that. Is it going to show me what my expected income is at the moment? Oh, it's zero. Okay. Hopefully that changes soon. Um, and it looks like we're making not a ton of money from the brewery in Sargo. But all in all, our total income is still more than our total expenses. So every little bit helps. Yeah, so as long as we can maintain that. Uh, I'm fine with breaking even on this end because all the loot we get from battle is more than enough to um, keep us well into the positive. So I should have, yeah, I have plenty of room to bring all of these troops on. And I'm going to need to ride around a bit before it will allow me to recruit any of these prisoners. But that would be the idea is to, you know, go ahead and get them into the, into the garrison. Wow, our army is um, a lot smaller than it was just a bit ago. Let's actually visit some of our villages just to see how things are going. So Garangolia is the silver mine. They also have a bunch of troops for me. Very kind. <clears throat> excuse me. Very kind of them. Uh, they're not selling anything, are they? So another way that we can make money is um, if the town, for whatever reason, doesn't have enough cash to buy everything from you, you can just dump it all in one of your villages and your villagers will sell it off. And you will actually make that money back in taxes. So that's kind of cool. But in this case, um, that wasn't the reason why I didn't get rid of the weapons. I didn't get rid of them because I wanted to turn them into uh, supplies. Let's actually just wait until they're all ready to go. It might be easier. I'll just put the lone legionary in the garrison. He can be a one-man army defending this place. There is, there is militia there, of course. But in terms of actual garrison, there's nobody. 
So let's um, go to the keep, manage the garrison, and it's just going to be you. Sure. Anything else that we want to do? Probably not. Actually, let's check into the smithy real quick. I'm going to fulfill some of these orders, but I'm not going to show that on camera. I don't think you guys need to sit and watch me uh, fiddle with weapon parts. Okay, so from that smithing, Kaleem the Engineer has leveled up. Uh, well, not leveled up, sorry, but he does have access to another perk. So Curious Smith is completely irrelevant because we have already unlocked, I think, all the weapon parts. Or at least the vast majority. So Steelmaker 2 is going to be the only real choice here. And you may have noticed um, as I'm browsing through the menus and stuff that we have had the addition of a new character uh, to our party. And that is Zuhaira the Spice Fender. So she's actually Kaleem's niece. And I brought her on because uh, as a Spice Fender she has good trade skills. So if we were inclined to... Um, Put together a caravan, she would be a good choice. She's also, um, let's go to a different, actually, can I get to your um, encyclopedia from here? No. So let's go to the party screen. Uh, where is she? So she is both honest and merciful, so she obviously fits the bill in terms of what we're looking for character-wise. And actually, now that I look at it, age 23, relation 20, she's a decent steward. She might be a... a decent um, marriage candidate for Adrius. I have mods where I can marry companions and she's young enough. She's the right character makeup. So what do you guys think? Let me know since we're nearing the end of this episode. I won't do it today. But if you guys like the idea of maybe marrying um, into uh, sort of like an inter-clan marriage, we can, we can definitely do that. Um, obviously, we're not related. Um, she's just part of our clan because she's a companion. But anyway, that might be interesting. So our POTUS is smoking for some reason. Is that because it was raided or are they producing something that generates smoke? <laughs> I don't think grain typically generates smoke. So maybe they got raided recently. Oh, my medicine skill is going to start shooting up too because everybody's injured. All right, well, let's try down here. We'll see if we can get a few more recruits. I'd like to build my army back up. I mean, we didn't lose that many, but it is going to show a lot lower than it actually is because we have so many wounded. Um, we'll just grab all of these, and I'm going to offload some onto my brother. Oh, one more point in leadership, and we'll get uh, another perk. So let's talk to you. And what is your current capacity? So you're at 114 out of 127. So you can take on a few more. And I've been offloading all of the uh, pikemen onto him. So the um, Manalitos are pikemen. And I've just been giving them to him so that they're all in one place. Uh, I think the Exculcators are with him as well. So let's do that too. And he can take on, what, seven more? Are you holding on to the archers for me? It looks like you are holding most of them. So let's give you those six. And I think all of these will give to Arturius. Uh, no, you're not being attacked. Okay. So let's talk to Arturius. And ba -ba -ba. there we go. You have just kind of a random assortment of troops. But uh, a lot of them are recruits. So these guys should fit right in. There we go. Um, I'm actually going to give him the caravan guard as well. That'll free up a bit more space in my party. I want to have a lot of Balistari, the crossbowmen, and a lot of legionnaires in my party. I'm a little bit too cavalry heavy, and we saw that in the siege. That uh, I think the cavalry was actually the biggest of the three groups that were deployed. Fortunately, these Equus Tagmata are absolute beasts. And uh, they're equipped relatively well for, you know, foot combat and uh, mounted combat. So 
my concern with that is more I, I don't want a bunch of them dying to artillery and um, ranged troops on walls when they're you know better suited to a, a field battle. But they seem to hold themselves pretty well. In fact, they got virtually all the kills, it looked like. Anyway, that seems to be good. That leaves a little bit of space for me to do more recruiting as well. And I'm genuinely curious what's going to happen to Varos. Because they've, they've just been completely wiped out. So, I think most of them are still prisoners of the Asurai. And the ones that aren't have really nowhere to go. And they're at war with a lot of factions. Oh, hello. Sargo just changed hands. The Asurai are really um, pushing north. So they haven't lost any ground over here. Typically, you'll see Husen Folk here um, be probably the first town to change hands in any campaign. The, um, the Southern Empire almost always takes it. Alternatively, sometimes I see the Asurai take Danustica, but more often I see Husen Folk fall. But rarely do I see nothing change over there and then the Asurai push so aggressively into the west here. What that means, though, is if we were so inclined, we might be able to snipe some stuff from the Asurai. Uh, I'm willing to bet the garrison here is not very strong. We do need to consider, though, if we go to war with them, uh, they're right on our doorstep, so... It, it could be quite challenging. Let's actually spend the last few minutes of this video scouting that out a bit. So the Asurai have quite a few clans, but uh, it doesn't look like they've taken on any more than what they would have had um, initially. So I don't, I don't see anything uh, like minor factions or whatever bolstering their, their forces. Um, they are currently at war with Varos, which is how they gained a lot of that land. Also, Valandia, and then the Beni Zilal and the Jawal, which are two minor factions that they are always at war with. But they are no longer at war with the Southern Empire. So, if we did go to war with them, the Valandians would be probably the primary distraction that we had to work with. And that is not necessarily going to benefit us much because the Valandians, of course, are further away. So the enemy would literally have to ride through our territory to get to the Valandians. And I believe the game is coded such that the AI will always favor targeting the player anyways. So they're, they're, not def they're definitely not going to ride through my territory to attack somebody else. If anything, they would ride through somebody else's territory to attack mine but Garantar Castle would be a nice addition to the territory that we already have and Usank and Sargo while you know sort of like the du jour territory of the Valandians is very much adjacent to our our current territory so that would be a nice addition as well I'm not super inclined to take Vlandian territory. I wanted to focus more on Imperial territory, but sometimes you got to take what you're given. The alternative would be going to war with this minor faction. Well, this is technically a major faction, but they're very small. But I think Krotor is actually a, a decent guy. Yeah, so he's honest. Um, we're actually quite friendly with him. So not necessarily somebody I want to go to war with just for the sake of declaring war. Uh, his son is also honest. Let's see. Feya is honest and another actually pretty decent potential marriage candidate. If we're looking for more of a, a warrior queen, she would be the choice. I don't know that I necessarily am, though. I think there are plenty of lords that we can fill that role with. I generally lean more toward uh, governor queens because that's often a harder role to fill. And then Meritor is cautious, but otherwise a relatively upstanding gentleman. So honestly, this is a clan that I would like to bring into our faction, if anything. I don't know how we would do that diplomatically, though. I am running the Diplomacy mod, so I, I guess we would just need to 
make contact with their clan leader and see what our options are. So let's send a messenger their way. And maybe maybe these two neighboring factions can uh, come together to bolster their strength. We'll see. Uh, right, so we're at about an hour right now. I am going to make some cuts, obviously. So we might be uh, just short of that. Let's actually take a look at our quests. So there's only two more nobles we need to talk to in order to complete this quest. We should probably do that because given that this is the campaign and not a sandbox, I don't believe we can technically form our own kingdom until we've completed uh, certain parts of the storyline. So to that end, we need to figure out who the two remaining ones are. We've talked to Durthurt, we've talked to Lucon, we've talked to to Ragnvod, we've talked to Garios, Kaladog, Unkid, uh, Adram, I don't know who that is, and Unthri. Hmm, I think there's actually one more member of the Sturgeons, potentially, that we would need to talk to. If I can't figure it out in this episode, I'll go look up a list and we'll just message them very quickly uh, in the next episode. But I, I'd like to complete that as soon as possible. So if we click on you, I don't think it actually, you know, what, it, maybe it is Olek. I can't send a messenger, but it says he's escaped. But I feel like. Yeah, I think Olek is one of the people we need to talk to. We've talked to Ragnvod. Um, it wouldn't be any of these guys. Oh, that's... Yeah, that's your clan. Godin. Yorig. Oh, dear. I'm pretty sure it is Olek. So I need to figure out why I can't send a messenger his way. I can click on this. I don't know what that does. <laughs> Anyway, let's actually go visit um, Yelmaris. Oh, so he just appears. Okay, um, I probably won't use that again. That seems a bit cheap. So, my name is Adrius, sir. May I ask yours? Can you tell me about the Battle of Pendrake? Okay, here we go. Yeah, so he is one of them. A victory won by my father, claimed by Ragnvod. King O... Uh, sorry, <laughs> not Olek. Uh, old King... Vadinslav was brave enough. He led us all into battle. I stood at my father's side as we faced the Imperials eye to eye over the tops of our shields. It was like any battle where shield wall meets. Oh, sorry, where shield walls meet. Thrust and push, struggling to stay on your feet, but you can't really describe it. Let's just say it's the kind of battle that Sturgeons usually win. When the Imperials had enough of us, they broke and ran for the ramparts. There they drew... They threw darts and rocks and their cursed fire. We had to go up ladders one by one. Uh, Vadin Slav was hit by a mace and went down. My father then went up, cleaving as he went, and rallied us and led us to victory. My father took the Imperial Dragon Banner from dead Noretzi's hands. It's a famous story. And, but then, the little Prince Ragnvod tried to claim it. My father broke it over his knee, threw it at him, and told him to get his own toys to play with. Ha! It was a good day. Or, it was a good, good day. Alright, thank you. Is there anything else? Uh, no. That's it. Thank you for updating my quest. Is there anybody else? There has to be one more. I just do not know who it would be. Um, I'm inclined to say it might be either... So there, there's 10 people to talk to, but there's not 10 factions. So multiple people from certain factions. We've talked to Lucon, Garios. Oh, we haven't talked to Regea. Right? Durthurt, Lucon, Ragnvod, Garios, Kaladog, Unkid, Adram, Unthri, and Olek. We have not talked to... Empress Regea. So, maybe we should go find her and talk to her personally. Rather than sending a messenger, let's uh, let's get the measure of her, the, the current leader of... Oh! What happened to your mother? 
Well, she's not dead. But she's also not the leader of the faction. What's going on there? Well, now I'm really curious. She was at Sestad Sestadime Castle, which is here. So she is relatively far west. Let's actually try to track her down and see what's going on. Oh, we have Krotor's messenger here. My friend, it's been a while. All right. So I don't think he has anything to say about it. Duke Penton has some thoughts. Who the hell are you? All right. Um, Penton. Okay, so we can talk to him if we need to. I'll send a messenger. Why not? Okay. Anyway. Um, blah, 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 blah. Need help with a problem? Service of strangers? You just greeted me as a friend. Oh, but you only want to work with lords of your realm. So, enter your service. How about a proposal that benefits us both? We can't trade fiefs yet. Um, we have quite a bit more money, but there's nothing to really barter. Quick question. Never mind. Okay, so there's obviously nothing that we can do through this menu that would advance sort of our standing with him or merge these kingdoms in any way. So maybe if we go to... You know what? We don't have access to the diplomacy stuff until we are a proper kingdom. So let's just focus on that, I guess. And we have a siege on our hands. So we're going to have to go break that siege. Uh, Duke Penton. Let's see what he's got to say. All right, so let's introduce ourselves. What can you tell me about the Battle of Pendrake? You know my name, whose son I am. Um, I I don't honestly. Oh, you're part of Noretzi's. Okay, so are you the son of Emperor Noretzi's? Was the son of the old emperor? Yeah. Okay. So he must be new since I played this last. We had no choice but to go to war. Anyone who tells you they would have done otherwise is either a liar or a coward or both. The Sturgeons attacked us and needed to be chastised. We lost an army and a banner, but we did not lose our honor. And without honor, the empire would be finished. We lost because the Vlandians broke their oaths and fought us when they should have fought with us. I was given command of the cataphracts, and we easily crushed their crossbowmen. Their knights gave us more trouble... Meanwhile, the Sturgeon infantry came down and attacked our main force. That's where my father fell. The barbarians just kept coming and coming. I fought my way out with some loyal men and made my way back to the capital, but I found that Arenicus had got there before me and had himself declared emperor. He always was a cunning operator. You want more information? There are two people you might try to speak to. Istia worked as a sort of unofficial spymaster for Noretzis. She lives near Epocratia. Then there is Arzagos, who was his bodyguard. He's supposed to be near Marunath, though I hear he's changed quite a bit since then. All right, thank you. All right, so we've completed that quest. Um, I must regret not getting to talk to Regea first, because I know that she does, in fact, have quite a bit to say on the matter. Um, but, you know, we need to stop this siege, so let's... Let's do that. Oh. Looks like they hired some more minor factions. Where did Arturius go? You know what? It's fine. We are going to need to pick him back up, though. But I don't know why he just decided to... Leave. No. Um, okay, Nathanos is going to attack him, so we're going to get involved here. But yeah, my party just disbanded. I think the cohesion got too low, and I just didn't notice. I didn't think that cohesion was a problem when you were only using your own clan lords, though. Hmm. Anyway, let's let's get in here. Okay. So, God, we have a big cavalry force. Um... It's getting better, though. We have 83 infantry deployed, which is an improvement. 
so who's leading? Okay, so poor place. Um, we're going to put Nathanos in charge of that group, and we'll create a new cavalry group here with Marius at the lead. And we'll just split this 50-50 so that we have two wings of cavalry. It's going to be a pretty cavalry-centric battle, I wager. Come on. Pretty cavalry-centric battle, I wager, because the field is quite open. Um, infantry, we'll deploy you here. Archers, let's get you into a loose formation. Right about there. And let's deploy. So I'm off in the left cavalry wing. Let's get back toward the center. Um, might be worth trying to redeploy everybody to the right. Cool. We got the banner rocking. It's just blank. That's kind of disappointing but whatever yeah I'm going to circle around here who is this lone dude just charging right anyway um, what is, what's he doing okay group four follow me if you would we're gonna swing wide and I think I'm actually going to send the infantry here and the archers here. And then we're going to put that other cavalry group sort of guarding the flank thereabouts. Oh, do not stab me, please. Let them run into those guys. The problem is when they're following me, they tend to not really attack or anything. They just kind of let the enemy pass through them, which is really unfortunate. Uh-oh. I'm gonna go help my archers out here. Come on, you guys are still being chased. Fight back. That was a little bit late. Yeah, so they will attack a bit here and there, but... Uh, they're obviously more concerned with following me than they are with attacking. Hopefully that was enough to slow him down. It says Kaleem killed somebody. Maybe it was that guy. Okay, so I want the infantry... Let's see, archers right up here on this hill. Infantry downslope. Getting ready to advance. Um, I have a group of cavalry over there. I can't see through your head, buddy. Let's get them moving. And then group four, get over here. Get ready to uh, pincer attack. So infantry, advance please. Try to maintain cohesion if you can. Um, we'll get them a little bit closer before the cavalry does anything. I don't think they have enough horsemen to really worry about too much. They're going to try to harass us, but it's, it's like a little chihuahua nipping at a... Great Dane or something. It's not really, you know, <laughs> worth even bothering. And I'll just try to protect the archers as best I can. Oh, you're down? Nope. I don't want any business with that spear. There we go. All right, uh, there's a lot of chaos happening, but we appear to be winning, though we are taking more losses than I would have liked. A lot more losses than I would have liked. What is going on right now? Why are we losing so many men? You're on my side. Like, all I see is my men swarming, and yet there's a lot of them dying. <laughs> what What is going on with that? Well, battle's over, so... Guess there's nothing to be worried about now. Nope, there we go. We're losing more troops. But to who? We're still losing troops. <laughs> like, that doesn't even make sense. We just won the battle, but the last three casualties were on our side. Um, we only had two deaths. Though they were both elite units. And then the Thanos lost six Limitani. Eh, it could have been a lot worse. 
Okay. So our charm went up for that. And Oracos of the Hand. He is cruel, so not somebody that we necessarily want to befriend. In that case, I'll take him prisoner. And let's see. We did rescue some Imperials that we'll take on for garrison duty. The rest, I think, I will just let go free. We'll take those prisoners because they are... Um, more Imperials for potential garrison troops. Let's upgrade all of you. And I think it's actually we are right outside of town. So I think it's about time to recruit all those prisoners. Let's share the loot. I'm going to wait till I'm actually in town though. Uh, talk to him, please. Let's see. Where is it? Um, new assignment for you. I want your party in my army. Yes. Then we're going to have to go get Arturius. Um, okay. I'm going to leave now. Let's go. He's going to run away, so it might take me a bit to catch him. Oh, no. He stopped. Okay. Cool. Thank you for making that easy. I want you to join my army. Perfect. Okay. Let's get back to town. And I'm going to immediately leave. I just want to be able to jump right back in without um, losing anybody to the fact that I have too many... Um, what's it called? Too many people in the party. So... I know I'm going to take a huge morale hit here, but I think it will be worth it to have a massive garrison. Can I just recruit all? Is there a button for that? I don't think so. Oh, here we go. There is. Well, at least this makes it a little bit easier. Imperial, Imperial, Imperial. As long as they're Imperial. Hidden hand, interesting. Um, yeah, I'll take the hidden hand because they're technically imperial culture. And maybe those puppeteers as well. That's going to cost me 106 morale though. Is my entire army going to desert when I do this? Oh god. This might be a terrible idea. I'm going to cancel. <laughs> um, let's do this a little bit at a time. So the... Where are they? The 30. Did it seriously just change? Are they no longer willing to join? You guys said you wanted to join. <sighs> Whatever. Uh, I'm going to deal with this off camera. So <laughs> um, we had some level ups. Let's take care of that and then we'll call it a day. So my leadership is 75. Um, we're not going to be doing any governing. So that initial perk or that first perk is useless. But plus five party size is always welcome. Heroic leader, same deal. First perk, useless. But troops in our formation cause 10% morale penalty when they kill an enemy. I'm not doing a lot of captaining, so I don't think it's worth doing that. I think we go with the party leader bonus and get a little bit more men in our army. So was that the only one? I think it was. Okay. So we'll leave it there. One last thing. Um, let's just review this. So in the next episode, we want to meet with either Istiana or Arzagos or potentially both to see what they have to say about this whole um, Dragon Banner business. And I am going to try to start seeking out a wife for our main character, um, who is now, it's not gonna let me click on that. Oh, here we go. So he's 25 now, still pretty young, but we want to get things rolling sooner rather than later, especially now that we're about to be the leader of a faction. So let me know what you guys think about, uh, what's her name? I've already forgotten it. Uh, Zuhaira. She's, you know, maybe a good choice. Or if, again, we want to go more in the vein of a, a warrior queen, the daughter of Krotor was also a potentially good candidate. Uh, but there's also others if you have thoughts. So... Uh, let me know what you think, but I'd like to start moving on that soon. 
anyway, thank you so much for watching. I had a great time playing some Bannerlord with you. Uh, let me know what you thought of the video in the comments below, and I look forward to seeing you guys back here for the next one.